President Obama signed the controversial bill into law. But back in August of 2009, months before that happened, Americans started to learn more about the law. And at the time, we saw a remarkable grassroots uprising, starting with, I remember it well, Bill Hemmer and I were on the air doing America's Newsroom, that we were told to cut to breaking news at an Arlen Specter town hall. We were only going to take a minute of it. An hour later, we came back on camera. Here's a bit. Leave us alone. That's all we would ask. Would you leave us alone? see the things that my government is doing. They are not working for us. They are working against us. Um, we cannot afford this. Period. Keep the government out of it. We're going just fine. Thank you, sir. You want to be let out of here? You're welcome to go. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want to leave? Leave. I am going to speak my mind before I leave because your people told me I could. This is incredible for the United States of America. So the people in this room want their country back. If you Yes, I'm angry. I'm an American citizen. I'm a voter. I'm a taxpayer. I don't like the fact that my elected officials are running around calling me un-American, a rabble rouser, a mobster. I'm sick of the lies. I don't like being lied to. I don't like being lied about. This administration is doing both of those things. Now, I want you, as my senator, to go back to Washington, D.C. and tell those people to do what the president said that I should do, is shut up and get out of the way. It's not about left and right. This is about the systematic dismantling of this country. I'm only 35 years old. I've never been interested in politics. You have awakened the sleeping giant. Wow. Joining us now, that woman you just heard at the end, Katie Abrams, who attended that town hall back in 2009. Also here, Tracy Miller, who was a vocal participant at another town hall hosted by Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And Tea Party Patriots co-founder Jenny Beck Martin is co-author of Tea Party Patriots and the Second American Revolution. Ladies, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, let me start with you, Katie. I remember that so well, as I said in the introduction. Hammer and I were sitting there. We're just going to take a sound bite. It was because Hammer, uh, it was getting contentious. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We went to take a, a bit. That turned out to be a seminal moment in the healthcare debate. Do you feel like you, do you, feel like you lost that debate? Oh, absolutely not. You know, as the healthcare debate went on, you know, obviously we saw that this federal government chose not to listen to us. And as Nancy Pelosi said, if we can't go through the gate, we'll jump over the fence. If we can't jump over the fence, we'll parachute in. This showed the arrogance of Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, and the rest of this administration. In 2010, it was true, and we proved that this debate has not gone away and that we are a force to be reckoned with. Tracy Miller, you you had you went to this town hall with Sheila Jackson Lee, where she took a she took a cell phone call in the middle and kept everybody who showed up to talk to her waiting. That became controversial. People took note. Did you get politically active at the time? Was it because of the health care bill? I would say the health care bill made it personal for me, like it has for many Americans. When when the government comes for your health care and wants to make decisions that impact your life and the lives of your family, uh, that's personal. And so it did awaken a lot of people that were uh, before this on the political sidelines. Jenny, do you feel like the health care law spurred the Tea Party movement in part? Well, the Tea Party movement in the modern day form started before the health care legislation, but it definitely added fuel to the fire. People in America do not want the government to control uh, control our lives. They don't want it to control our health care. And this this law is a complete and total overreach of the federal government. Katie, the, the latest polls, this is a, an ABC News Washington Post poll, says Americans oppose this law now by 52 to 41 percent, 41 percent support it. 67% believe the high court should ditch this law, or at least the portion that requires that requires people to have coverage, the mandate. 67% believe that's what should happen next week. Do you still have hopes 
that we're going to see this law uh, eliminated either by the U.S. Supreme Court, which could gut it, or in the next presidential election. I pray that they do overturn this law. But the thing that concerns me is when we have justices on the, the Supreme Court that are ridiculing the, the Constitution in and of itself, that concerns me a lot. Um, you know, we have to stand together. I know next Tuesday I'm going to be down in Washington, D.C., across from the Supreme Court with the Hands Off My Health Care rally. And we are going to be standing one last time against this bill. And if this bill is not overturned in the Supreme Court, then we are going to have to focus our sights on Congress to repeal this bill themselves. You, you, it's interesting to hear you saying that you're going to this rally next week. You weren't political before this, were you? I mean, you said you've awakened yeah. the sleeping giant. Now look at you. Why? Why does this yeah. touch such a core? And why did it touch such a core for those who are at that town hall? You know what? Listening to the video that you played, I almost wanted to start crying because you felt the passion of everybody in that room. The last thing we want is the government to walk in through our front door and mandate that we have to have one product or another. I mean, you look at the federal government now. They would love nothing more than for all of us to drive a Chevy Volt. Look at what an awful car that is. Do you want your health care to be exactly like a Chevy Volt? I don't think so. Tracy, you know, whenever you talk to Democrats about it, they say, look, the, the disapproval numbers of this health care law, it's not just Republicans. It's Democrats who wanted a bigger bolder law who wanted, uh, you know, a government option and so on. Do you think that they accurately have their have their finger on the pulse of how Americans feel? No, I don't. Um, I see a lot of people turning to government for an answer to their problems uh, right now. And, and health care is just one of the places that they're trying to solve problems. But I would say to someone who wants even more from the government and the taxpayer to pay for it, I haven't seen the government solve any problems. We've had governments all over the world trying to solve poverty for hundreds of years, and it's never happened. And our government is not going to solve health care, and we cannot even afford this. I think the bottom line is we can't afford it. So not only is it a personal decision between a doctor and a patient, what what type of care they're going to receive instead of having a panel decide if you're eligible or not, for that procedure, it's also a matter of, we can afford this. Yeah. We have an out of control spending spree going on in DC and it's unsustainable. Jen Jenny Beth, 37, 37 Democratic House members who voted for health care uh, were defeated when they ran for reelection. The president barely mentioned it in his State of the Union address. The majority of Americans opposed the law. 67% believe the high court should ditch it and yet it may not. It may not, and, and this law may stand in, in this society. What are the lessons of that? Well, when is the last time 67, 70% of Americans agree on a political issue? You almost can't get that many Americans to agree on apple pie. Congress in Washington, D.C. need to listen, and they need to realize that Obamacare is a cancer in our government, and it's time to rip it out, and it's time to repeal this legislation now. Props. She brought props. <laughs> Listen, it's been interesting talking to you. We, we remember it well. We remember watching uh, some of you at these town halls, and we thought now with, this, with the law going up to the Supreme Court for you know, its final constitutional test, at least for now, we check back in. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.